If you haven't heard, I am doing my year of make do, which is a year where I set myself the challenge of not accumulating any clothes. No, not even secondhand clothes, not even thrifted clothes. No, not even socks, not even knickers. It's gonna be a long year, folks. However, something I am allowed to do is learn to make my own clothes. As part of my healing my relationship with my wardrobe journey, I'm taking on this challenge to see how I can build my wardrobe in a more authentic and slower way. Because believe me, when you have to spend 80 hours knitting a jumper, you really think about whether you actually need it. Now, those of you who watched the introduction video to my year of make do will know that I already do have some goals. This is my bingo card for things that I would like to achieve in the coming year when it comes to my sewing prowess. However, you'll notice that these are goals. They're not plans. And oh, <laughs> do I have some plans to share with you today. Now, because of one of the reasons that I'm doing this is because of sustainability and overconsumption, I don't have a goal of how many garments I'd like to make. I only simply like to make garments that I genuinely want when I feel like making them. But oh, have I been daydreaming. And oh, so far I've been looking at the stuff that's already in my wardrobe and wondering, why I'm not wearing it. So I've got five categories of things I'd like to action in the coming year. And in each category, I have three little dreams. We're not gonna call them targets. We're gonna call them dreams. The categories are re-wearing, mending, patterns, materials, and because however much I want to get away with at the core of this channel is books, books. Let's begin with my re-wearing goals. The first thing I would like to do is make some reels on Instagram of re-wearing weeks. This is where I pick a few items and try and wear the same item every day of a week without getting bored and trying to reinvent it in some way, introduce new things into the outfit. I love watching other people's outfit reels and I very rarely prioritize or try them myself. And I think this would be a really great way for me to push myself into enjoying and reimagining the stuff I already own. The second thing I want to do is do some purgatory hangers. I don't know if that's the technical term, but I've seen other people do it on the internet where they turn all of their hangers facing one way. And once they've worn it, they face it the other way to tell what they're not wearing. I think that'd be a really useful information to have. And while I've known about that hack for a really long time, I can't say I've tried it or not for a very long time. And thirdly, I would like to set some seasonal moral reminders in my calendar. I never used to be somebody who would put away my spring or summer wardrobe and only focus on my winter wardrobe. I'd usually just keep it all in one wardrobe and let it froth out <laughs> onto the carpet quite frequently. So I've started doing that a little bit, but there is no rhyme or reason to it. It's just when I'm going up to the loft or I feel like it, the pure knowledge novelty having lived in London for 10 years to even have a loft I don't think has sunk in yet and I need to start making use of it. So I'm going to set some actual calendar dates with myself in the diary in which to switch out my wardrobe so that I don't get overwhelmed and I'm only looking at a wardrobe of things that are actually seasonally appropriate. The next category is mending and I have three items that I'd really like to mend this year, the priorities. This is a treasured 100% wall jumper of mine I got from Depop. It's by a really small indie brand called Yan Tan and everything's spun and knitted in England. It's really, really beautiful. If you go up close, you can see it's got tiny little specks of yellow in it. And I feel like influencers say this all the time, but I'm like, it genuinely is such a good layering piece, I swear. Anyway, it's got this really quite growing double hole in the armpit which is slightly concerning. And I've never darned before, but this does look like it calls for darning. And I, I think that I'm up to the challenge. Tell me I'm up to the challenge. But something I'm flitting between is whether I do visible mending, because I'd love that. I'd love to do like a bright green or a bright yellow, or whether I try and blend it in with the rest of the jumper, because let's face it, visible mending is really cool, but it probably is quite jarring if it's under your arm and you just see a flash of yellow or green as you raise your arms, you know? So anyway, that is definitely on the mending pile. I also have this rather fancy green dress from I think quite an expensive brand that I bought for 15 pounds off Vinted last year because it was beautiful and the RRP was like 150 pounds. However, the reason that nobody else is buying it, and I knew this when I bought it, is that it has this rip on the thigh and I, 
can't work out again how exactly to fix it. I know that I can fix it. I know that I could just sew it up, but I think that there might be a more creative way to do it. And it's such a beautiful dress. I really don't want it to go to waste. And I just watched it sit on Vinted for maybe about three months. And I was like, I can't be having this. I have to rescue it. So this year I'd like to find a really creative way, uh, maybe some embroidery of trying to fix this dress. And then thirdly, this is a winter coat that I bought when I was 22. I am now 33 and I still absolutely love this coat. I have really looked after it. I've had it dry cleaned a couple of times. I've debobbled it a few times, but it is really what I would have called in a past mindset of mine at the end of its life. But I refuse to accept that. Now that I'm trying to hone my sewing skills, I would really like to reline this. It's the lining that's really failing in this coat, not the actual main material. It's originally fast fashion. I think it was from Mango. I got it on sale and the pockets are completely shredded. It is still quite bobbly, but I think that maybe I could reline it in a warmer fabric. Because another reason that I don't wear it, even though it's a bit shabby, is because I bought it when I was living in London. And I thought this was a joke people used to say to me, now I don't live in London. I can tell you it's real. Due to the smog and pollution, a winter coat in London is not the same as a winter coat outside of London. Now I don't live and daily move through a really clogged up high pollution city, I can tell you that the temperature is genuinely lower. And this coat no longer serves me through all of the seasons that it used to. And I guess I was also like popping in and out of really heated places like the tube and big shopping centers and stuff and my office, I guess. So I don't know, but I definitely, if I am going to keep this coat in rotation, it needs to be warmer. And while lining something, it does feel really out of my skill set right now. I believe by the end of 2024, or even maybe the beginning of winter 2024, I will have the skills to reline this jacket. I've said it now, it's on the internet, I can't take it back. Patterns I would like to make. There's an endless list of them. Like if you're somebody who scrolls on Pinterest, or you're on sewing Instagram, you'll know there is an endless list, but I've picked three that I'd like to prioritize this year. The first is this mini mock neck tank pattern by Jessie Moore Designs. I think it's perfect. It looks good on every model that's shown on the listing. It looks absolutely adorable and I've never knitted a top before. I've never knitted something this large in such small a needle. And after my fiasco with my dragon scarf last year, I think I might be ready to go back to the 3.25 needles, even though I'm really a big chunky knit girl. I think for this, it would be worth it. And I do have a yarn in mind. I think I'd go for a bit of a darker yarn than what they show on the models, but I think that would be a really cool challenge and genuinely something that I would wear quite a lot. Next is the Miri jumpsuit from Paper Cut Patterns. This was a chosen present from my friend Sana and I was drawn to it because it looks so similar to a jumpsuit I still have, but no longer fits me. And I love the design of it. I never thought I'd be able to find something to replicate it, but here it is. Doesn't it look amazing? Doesn't it look like it would be really versatile for a changing body and like it probably fit me at loads of different sizes and it would fulfill one of my bingo card goals, which is to sew a crotch. It's definitely a bigger project than I've ever done before. I've never done a jumpsuit, but I think that I might be up to the challenge. And this is particularly a stretch goal because it's an intermediate pattern. I've never tried an intermediate I've only done a confident beginner. And the third one is this indie pattern called the Joy Mini Tea Towel Dress from Afraid Upcycling. She sells her own ready to wear stuff that she makes out of upcycled scraps, but she's also started selling the patterns that she uses. So this one is particularly to make use of old tea towels. So it's cut to the exact dimensions of a traditional tea towel. And then you can like piece together your dress from there. I think it's really, really clever. And I'd love to support an indie designer as well. So I do, have a tea towel in mind for this and it's a little controversial. <laughs> So I hope you're excited because obviously I'm probably gonna share it on the channel. Um, but this is such a perfect, loose fitting, creative dress and exactly the kind of thing I'd like to make when I say, I think that sewing gives me an opportunity to wear the stuff I actually genuinely want that isn't available in shops. And I can hand on heart say, these kinds of dresses are definitely not available in shops. So I'd really like to try it. Chaos might ensue, but hey, chaos ensues anyway, I find with me. So why not have fun while you're doing it? The next category is materials. So these are fabrics and yarns that I'd like to use up from my stash. The first one <laughs> is a dream I have been having for a while. I bought these curtains ages ago for a very affordable price from Vinted. And <laughs> <laughs> Look, if you know, you know, I'll give you three seconds to guess why I bought this fabric. 
Correct. It is because it's the Julie Andrews curtain fabric. Or it's, it's closer it's closer than I've ever seen. Like I know it's not exactly on, but it really speaks to me. I'd like to make myself a little place set, like I'm a Von Trapp child. Now I know that I'm saying that out loud, it does sound a little stranger than it does in my head. <laughs> but I've already started cutting out the fabric. You can't stop me. Suggestions for patterns, welcome below. But I just want it to be something I can have fun in and move in. And I might even make myself a matching jacket because nobody can stop me, okay? <laughs> It might be really hot and uncomfortable though, so I need to think of a way around that. The second is this mustard yarn I've had for ages. I actually have quite a bit because it came from a failed project that I had to frog. And I've really been scratching my head about how to use this and make it something that I genuinely would wear. And I saw in passing this picture on the internet of a pink and mustard striped jumper. And I was just, I don't know what, it just makes my heart sing. It's just so, it's such a weird combo, but also really autumnal and warm. So I got exactly Exactly the same kind of yarn but in a different colour. I got raspberry pink in Lil Crazy Sexy Wool from Wool and the Gang and I think I'm going to try and make a striped jumper out of both of these. Either way this stuff needs to leave my house. It's been here for so long. I've already made a cardigan out of it but I just have too much of it and again I just really want it to be something unusual and weird and I think that this might fulfil all of my cosy jumper dreams. And then lastly in the fabric category <laughs> A moment please for my soul in fabric form i found this fabric on so me sunshine i bought their last meter and a half very very recently and i just know that i love this fabric so much that i'm going to really overthink how i use it and i'm not going to get around to actually making anything out of it if i don't force myself so i'm telling you now that i just need to cut into the good fabric use my best stuff. Maybe I'll make a wrap top out of it. I just want to make something that I'll, I can wear through a few different seasons and that's going to be adjustable in case my body changes as it tends to do all the freaking time. So I'm thinking about this wrap top from Stitch Witch Patterns if I have enough fabric, which I think I might. It's a meter and a half. I think I could, but I am 100% going to make a muslin first, which is when you make a rough draft of what you're going to make before you use the good fabric. I will do that because I'm scared. I like this fabric is no longer available so I need to be careful with her <laughs> but I just think it would be such a shame to be so excited about this fabric and let that time in my life pass without actually getting to wear it anywhere so that's a priority and then the three books because I can't simply do an activity I of course have to read about the activity as well and become a nerd about that so the first book that I really want to read is Esther Rutter's This Golden Fleece A Journey Through Britain's Knitted History from Shetland to the Channel Islands, she unearths fascinating histories of communities whose lives were shaped by knitting, weaving and spinning. Among them, the mill workers of border countries and the stocking knitters of Wales. <laughs> Sign me the fuck up. This is the year that the Women's Prize are launching their non-fiction list and I fear that it's going to launch a theme for me into where I mainly just read non-fiction. So I'm excited about that. I want to read Loved Clothes Last, How the Joy of Rewearing and Repairing Your Clothes Can Be a Revolutionary Act. I was actually suggested this book by somebody who might want to buddy read it with me for my podcast, No Books on a Dead Planet. So stay tuned for that. But I was particularly excited to read this because I don't want to just get sucked into the making new clothes aspect of this year's challenge. I also want to think really deeply about mending and of course the politics of mending, which is why I also really want to read this book, Mend, a refashioning manual and manifesto. This has got full colours the whole way through and lots of charts and actual demonstrations on how to mend things and lots of visible mending inspiration. So I think this is one that I'm most excited about just because it looks like it's answering a lot of the questions I already have. No doubt I'll read other ones, but these are definitely the priority for this year. Thank Thank you so much for listening <laughs> to this random list of things that I'd like to do this year. If you have any goals for how to repair your relationship with your wardrobe this year, let me know in the comments below. You don't have to be knitting or sewing to do that. It can just be about the way you approach how you assemble an outfit or how you decide whether you're actually going to buy something or not. If you'd like to join the challenge of my year of make do, you can just use that hashtag on Instagram to join in on all the fun. There's a video explaining the challenge here and we also have a private chat on my Patreon where we're keeping up with each other on how we're getting on and swapping tips. Thank you so much to The Gumption Club for making this video happen. And I can't wait to share all my sustainable shenanigans in 2024. Frogs Nug out. <laughs>